All right, let's get this shit over with. January 2020 was horrible. It was the most January month you could have had for filmmaking, which was to say it is the worst. If you're not familiar, I'm sure many of you already are. January is the worst month of filmmaking. That's because so many people are going after the holiday binge. They're going back to work, back to school. They don't want to see movies. They don't want to spend money. They want to conserve during this month of utter dread and agony. And so a bunch of studios put out either their worst films of the year or their most mediocre films of the year in hopes that it'll soak up some money because they know it's not going to compete against better and bigger films. And so this month you had a lot of those. Um, two F Cinema scores. If you don't know, there have been 21 F Cinema scores ever that the audience has given a film. Two of them came from this month. I, I don't feel as though I need to elaborate more on that. The first one was the first movie of the year, and that was The Grudge. It was an American remake of an American remake of a Japanese horror film. How anyone thought that was going to be good, I don't know. And it started off the year and the decade on a really bad note. Then January 10th came along. You had Like a Boss, a bad chick flick that got horrible reviews. And Underwater, an a-, a spiritual remake of Alien, which got pretty okay reviews, made okay box office, but once again was a January film that's not going to show up on any best of at the end of the year. It was just an okay January film. Then you move on to the fact that we also had a lot of Oscar movies getting wide release. And let me just say that that pisses me the hell off, and here's why. What you have is, you know, film like 1917 got on countless best of the year lists. It even got on some best of the decade lists, and no one even saw it. It was given awards, it was given acclaim, and no one was able to judge that acclaim fairly because it didn't come out in 2019. It didn't really come out and show in any theaters until January 10th, which is about the most annoying thing ever. It's... I don't know why, but it's a pet peeve of mine because I know in the future we're going to go back and look at that as a 2019 film, as a film of the 2010s, but everyone who's in the general public and who wasn't a journalist or a movie reviewer who got to say it ahead of time knows that they saw it in the next decade. And speaking of 1917, the award season has been horrible so far. I don't know why 1917 is getting such a claim, not even on just a quality of film level, just talking about the film itself. It's not going to matter. It's a war film from 1917, and I get that the whole one-shot gimmick is great, but it's not going to mean anything. You know, you have a film like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which has grown on multiple viewings to be one of my favorite films of the year, probably my favorite film and one of my favorites of the decade even. And it's going to be Tarantino's one of his last times behind the camera. So it would be perfect to award him, but this thing is rising. It would be better to even award Parasite, but I don't know why the Oscars and the Actors Guild and the stuff is acting like this. I'm really not a fan of how award season is going. It's not only super predictable, but it's aggravating because so many great stuff is getting ignored and so much relevant stuff is getting ignored for other more, I guess, Oscar trendy pictures. I, I don't know, but that's award season. You can't really expect any more. And then the next week, January 17th, you had Doolittle, which, you know, was similarly hated, which was a cruel reminder of how, on irrelevant Robert Downey Jr. is without him in the Iron Man suit. Hopefully he has another film where he's able to, you know, build up some confidence outside of the MCU, but it's not happening with Doolittle. Then you had Bad Boys for Life, which of course was, you know, one of the better films of the month, but it also meant that a remake was getting a bunch of money, which you know means that they're going to have another spinoff or the studio is just going to keep on making remakes of older stuff. And, That's, of course, the worst-case scenario. Then the next week, you had the turning, the second F Cinema score of the month. Uh, I don't even know where to go at that point. And The Gentleman, which was really not good. Um, I really wanted to like this film, and I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say it was. A lot of the critics tore this to shreds, and I don't think it was that bad, but it definitely was not one of my favorites that I saw just ever. It was, it was a pretty bad time at the movie theater, and I'll elaborate it more probably at the end of the year. I don't think it's worth a full review, but was not a fan of this film at all. And then the next week, you closed off the month with Hansel and Gretel, oh, one of these... Oh, I can't stand all these horror movies that are so pretentious and don't have a real narrative or real anything. They just sort of happen, and luckily audiences rejected the hell out of that and the rhythm section, which was looked like a horrible... Low-key action film from Blake Lively, and audiences rejected that too. And so, with the exception of Sundance, that was really the month. And even Sundance wasn't that awesome, because you didn't really have anything that really stuck out. It was a lot about 
these very controversial topics about abortion and about stuff like basically Joker for the Me Too movement and promising young woman. And that's, that's basically how I understand it um, at the time of this recording. And it was just it goes to show you how non-mainstream Sundance is and how radical some of its ideas can be. Um, besides that, you had Minari and Boy State take home the top prizes, and so I'll probably check those out later in the year because they are the top winners, but even then, Sundance was a really disappointing event to kick off the year. And so to recap, you really just had a perfect storm of garbage. You had Sundance being underwhelming. You had an underwhelming award season. The movie I saw was really bad, so of course, you know, Spending money on a bad movie is never great, and of course it's from Guy Ritchie, who's a director that I really enjoyed his older work. You had a remake make a significant amount of money because of the utter lack of quality in the other films. You had two F cinema scores. You had basically no trailers either, nothing really exciting to you know seem like it's coming out. i got to say that the previews at The Gentleman were just so bad. Besides Tenet, which of course looks incredible, there was nothing that was even remotely good. It was a horrible month for cinema. It was a really bad, bad thing that, and I know a lot of people are going to, you know, cite it as a really, the main problem as, oh, this is going to signal some bad stuff through the year, through the decade. But I think it's just a continuation of a bad trend. And that's the trend that January has always been and maybe always will be just this utter dog crap month for movies. There have been some highlights, especially in the past couple of years, with Glass, with Paddington 2, films that I really enjoyed, but the, it, it's just not, It there's no way you can count on January. It's a horrible month of filmmaking that almost always is going to end up bad, and so that, I think, is the main takeaway from this, but it was just a bad month for movies and moviegoers and people that even remotely like movies and just check on it check in on it once in a while. It was bad for them too because they just saw from the outside a whole shit storm on the inside. And that was January 2020 and nothing's really coming up in February. Maybe I'll make a video on some older film, but nothing is really catching my eye. So it was um, a pretty bad month for films and that's about it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.